Good morning and welcome to the USA Cares podcast. I'm your host, Matt Caster. I am joined as always with Alexis Becker. Good morning, Alexis. Good morning. Are you fired up and ready? <laughs> so ready. Oh, you liar. You're not ready. So this is going to be fun. We, uh, we, you know, we always have a good time every week. And those of you who join us every week know that it's always a little different. It's always interesting, but it's all about our veterans. And so those of you who are new to the podcast, welcome. We're so excited you're here. Uh, we want to let you know this, this USA Cares podcast is all about veterans. It's all about showing the love to the people who have served our country so faithfully and those who have sacrificed to make life better for the rest of us. So we are all about supporting those veterans, uh, letting them know that we're here, uh, helping them out in any way we can. And we want to bring on guests every single week, Alexis, that will help really give encouragement to those veterans. Yes. So, um, so this week is no different, and except for the distance of which our guest is coming from. Yes, I think this might be the farthest. I think this is the furthest distance. Fur- furthest. Furthest farthest or farthest, whichever <laughs> distance for a, a podcast guest that we've had yet. And Alexis was so kind to offer to go in person and record this, but we decided to keep her in, in town. But, um, you know, it was a couple weeks ago we had a good friend of ours, SEAC, John Troxel mm-hmm. on, the Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Joint Chiefs. And he was kind enough to, to come on. It was, uh, I believe it was our September 11th episode. It was. And shared some, some really unique perspective and uh, really gave some encouragement and some hope to a lot of our veterans and active duty military. And uh, it was really moving. And really, I think the, the response that we got um, was, was overwhelming. And it, it really helped me to understand that, that we need to keep this encouragement going and keep this support going. And, you know, one of the things that Mr. Troxel said, and he gets mad when I call him Mr. Troxel, <laughs> but I'm gonna do, I, out of respect, I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, one of the things that Mr. Troxel said was that uh, there's this guy in Hawaii that you really need to have on. Mm-hmm. You remember that? I do. Yeah. I do. So, you know, we, we uh, got to know uh, this gentleman named Anthony Spadaro and learned a little bit more about his service in the Marine Corps. And uh, so I'm not going to waste any more time. I just want to go ahead and welcome him in. So coming to us from Honolulu, Hawaii, is Marine Sergeant Major Anthony Spadaro. Are you there, sir? Hello. Aloha. Let's Aloha. get it right. That's it. There you go. Come on back. To me. <laughs> did I do it right? Aloha. It right. Let's see Thank some you. shockers now. We'll get. Yeah. There you go. We'll get that going. Oh, okay. There you go. All right. So you're I'm now not so good at it yet. Now you're officially indoctrinated now. And so, the next step is to get you guys here. Oh, I'd love it. I, I would wait. love it. So Alexis and I were talking right before this podcast came on. If for those of you who are watching on YouTube, you're going to know what I'm talking about. But looking at the background behind the, the sergeant major, I really thought it was a virtual background and it is the real thing. So there's actually the ocean right behind him. And uh, I'm jealous. Very. I could be hey, on the you beach know, right some, now. Some of, us, some of us get lucky and we get to retire in Hawaii. It was purely Man. providence. It's purely providence. So It's a and long way from New event. Jersey to Honolulu. You, you know what? Could you believe they could take the boy out of New Jersey? But sometimes you can't take the Jersey out of the boy. So if you need an interpreter <laughs> later on for my accent, so hopefully you get someone that could help uh, figure out that's, the words I'm saying. That's awesome. Well, your good friend, the SEAC, said that we you were somebody we needed to have on this podcast. And, and we love him to death. We respect everything yeah. that he's done. And I know a friend of his is a friend of ours. So we are honored to have you on. You know, and any time, you know, SEAC, John Troxel. Well, like to me, it's very easy. He calls up. I just say hello, yes, and where do you need me to do? It's oh, that nice. type of relationship because I know the impact that John is making across, and that's why any time that you could be teamed up with someone with that type of energy, that type of synergy, and someone I hope to, like we talk about today is transformative. And, yeah. and John Troxel is a transformative leader. So literally, when John calls up, he always has me at hello. So anything there, <laughs> I listen to the, the fantastic podcast that you guys did conduct for our events on 11 September, heard John's words. And and man, if you didn't get fired up on that, you didn't get inspired. I mean, like I said, I'm just playing second fiddle to that guy. Well, we are, I'm sure you're not second (laughs) fiddle, but I I think you are, uh, you are well accomplished. So, so those of you who aren't, those, those who aren't familiar with you, 
you've had a very long career in the Marine Corps. You've been um, so gracious to serve our country for 35 years. Give them a little glimpse of what, what your time in the Marine Corps was like. Yeah, you know, the best way to put it, if you gave me just 10 seconds, it was a privilege to serve. Um, literally, that, that I was allowed to do 35 years serving with the finest men and women, and first along in the Marine Corps, then along in the Joint Force. And, and so when you look at the depth that, I, that, that you know, you get this kid from New Jersey that, that found himself involved with the best of the best that this world has to offer. So it really always came down to was what drove me to do 35 years, or I think anyone that you've had here that has served, it always comes down to this one common denominator. It's the people. And it's the people that we love to be with, the people that we want to share time with. It's the people that we experience hardships with that, that bring over some of the most meaningful events of our life. So that's what really took a kid out of New Jersey that, you know, joined the Marine Corps. My dad was a Marine. My brother was a Marine. They gave me six months to make it in the Marine Corps. They both did. They got out after four years. And, and, and I can still tell them that <laughs> you beat them. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, that was one of the incentivized reasons that, you know, I could show them that I could do it. But, yeah. you know, normally it's a family type of event. And, and again, too, I wanted that bonding experience to share the title with my dad and my brother. And yeah. then, of course, along the way, you know, the Marine Corps becomes your family. You know, it, it's those things you ever notice, like, you know, when you're in high school and you meet those people like, oh, these are going to be the best friends in yeah. my life or you're in college, you know, and you're going, oh, these are going to be my friends for life. Yeah. I got to tell you, though, you go into the military and this becomes your family for the rest yeah. of your life. That's amazing. I know that everybody has those times in their lives where like, I wish this could last forever. And, you know, yeah. I wish that we could just stay in this moment. I'm sure that was like that. But what were those yeah. what were some of those defining moments for you? Were there anything that were there any times that really stuck out to you? Like the, the best moments, really those. Uh, those things you know, you're most proud of or most excited about. Yeah, the still a, still a line from Dickens, you know, it was the best of times, it was the worst of the times. And yeah. it's always come down to is the combat deployments. Mm -hmm. and, and, and even though when, when you're looking at, you know, this is the things that you want to think that you got yourself prepared to do, you wanted to do. You also saw the worst things in your life. But at the end of the time, it's what keeps drawing us back to deploy again, to deploy again. You know, John had five combat tours. You know, I, I was fortunate to have three combat tours. And, and mm -hmm. those were those moments that I think that define you in so many different ways. It, one, it defines you individually, you know, to see if you have what it takes. But also, too, you get to see people doing extraordinary things under the most bizarrest of circumstances. And, and you watch people bond together in ways that transcend Anything that you could think imaginable. I mean, they talk about sports teams getting together or different types of societies getting together. I got to tell you, you put men and women through the crucible and the court of combat, and you mm -hmm. literally see what people are made of. So wow. those, I think, were those capstone moments of life is that those deployments that, you know, they're long, you know, my, you know, when you especially get more senior in rank, you know, they're, they're tend to be a year long deployment. So you're there for a yeah. year. You see so much, but. Like I said, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, but it, it's really the times that you, you reflect back on. And that's what causes those highs. That's why those veterans a lot of times keep talking about of what it meant to their to them in their lives. Yeah. What where where did you serve? What where were your tours? Uh, the first one is, of course, was, you know, the big one because, you know, serving for so long. So that big yep. swan song and desert storm, you know, desert yep. desert shield, desert storm. Um, so we did that deployment and then, of course, going to Iraq and mm -hmm. Afghanistan for those tours. And, 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 you know, really the last one was Afghanistan for that year long tour when a bunch of friends named, you know, Troxel and Spadaro and other guys named Greca and Bon and other friends that we all have. We're all together at one yeah. moment in time. And, and, you know, we got to share some time together. Were there, I, I imagine with, with the rank that you held, you led a large number of troops am i safe to say that yeah 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 and and about how many do you think you led at any given time you know the, the, the last one was with united states indo-pacific command which is the largest okay. geographical combatant command in the world and so we have three hundred and eighty thousand soldiers sailors oh, airmen goodness. marines and now space force in the command yeah. right when i got out of uniform we took on space force 
So at the last one, you said my morning report had about 380,000 plus. Wow. That also includes the 36 partner nations. It also includes DOD civilians. So really the, the other testament is that was the 36 partner nations that were you know, part of the Indo-PACOM family or that, that combatant commands uh, depth and breach. That's amazing. Unbelievable. Yeah, no, I know. And, and, you know, I used to drag, you know, old CX Troxel out to, to every visit. So he was out here a lot with us in Indo Paycom. And really, you know, we were forging relationships with so many other nations. And that's why hopefully we could talk about that transformative yeah. power of people when they can make these touch points and the things that you could change strictly by, you know, uh, personality, attitude, yeah. you know, desire. Well, it's interesting, you know, isn't it? When, when, when we spoke with, uh, with Siak Troxel, you know, he talked about some of the, the motivate, you know, trying to go in and motivate the, the troops and trying to get them just really feeling empowered and reminded them of the mission and why they're there and, and the importance and, and just trying to get really getting the most, that's what he's good at, right? Getting the most out of people and yeah. getting them to realize their potential. Is that what, is that what you spent a lot of your time doing as well? Yeah, I mean, that, that was one thing, you know, John, and, and, and something that he preached so well that was actually understandable was validate your credentials. Mm. And, and a lot of times people like to talk about it. And, and, and you remember a lot of times with a lot of these leaders, egos come in the door before they do. Yeah. But a lot of times they're not proving their value. And, and that's what the, that's what the, the young men and women are. are you got to remember, you're always being monitored. You're always being watched. I mean, literally from they're looking you up and down. Yeah. And again, too, so you don't want to be hypocritical. And that was the big thing where, you know, John and, and, and other good mm -hmm. leaders, they had that attitude is no hypocrites because someone's watching and especially the young ones. And, and they're always indicting us for our hypocrisy. So mm -hmm. that's why, you know, big thing that John used to preach to us was validate your credentials. And you heard him talk about being physically, mentally, emotionally hard. So, right. you know, you're going you're gonna to get out there and you're going to PT with them, but you're going to be out there with them. They want to see you. They want to see your struggle. They want to see you getting through things. They want you to be upfront. So especially if you're going to talk about, excuse me, mental health, you know, they don't mm -hmm. want you just blowing sunshines up their rear ends. They want yeah. to hear the reality of it. And we owe them that. And, and you know, and emotionally, positivity exudes positivity. So, you know, if you're going to sit there and just walk in all downbeaten and downtrodden, you're sending a message that you're already defeated. So when you, when you take that all there, you want to validate those credentials. When you're getting in front of people, you better show them that energy. You better show them that attitude. And you know what? They're going to follow. Yeah. I think people respect you more if you, you know, walk the walk and talk the talk. And just exactly, Alexis. Not as, do what I say, not as I do. Or Absolutely. Do as I, do as I say, not as I do. Uh, yeah, no, no, the other, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I use that on my monkey see, time. monkey do, exactly. whatever. But <laughs> yeah, but a lot of people do that, and so disingenuous. And that's what you're when you're talking about exit surveys, and and what did people right. feel where their service wasn't worth it? Is that they saw a lot of the hypocrisy. Yeah, and, and and that just does not work. Right, absolutely. Is that a question they ask on your in your exit? You know, do you feel your service? Is that a question that they ask about? Yeah, no, no. You know, that's the one thing I, I would obsess over, Alexis, is that, you know, you know, the person, you know, the big thing in the military is we have to do really well is recruit and we have to retain. Hmm. And, and remember, the, the, the military, 65 percent of the military turns over every year, wow. literally every year. You know, that these are people that are, you know, came in, they did an honorable four years and they're getting out. And they're going mm. into, you know, back into civilian life to do civilian things. So forever they have served. Yeah. Sometimes they forget about that. But you got to look at the, the, the Department of Defense. So every 60, every, every four years, 60, or every year, 65% turns over. Wow. And, and what I would obsess on was people leaving with a happy heart. Do they yeah. want to make sure that their service was valued? that their service was ver worth it. You know, I, I get a lot of people go up and say, hey, thank you for your service. And, and mm -hmm. hey, come on, it's a privilege to serve. I mean, you just got paid for four years by Uncle Sugar. And, and so <laughs> and, and, and people are saying, thank you for your service. And, and, yeah. and I don't get it why, you know, because and thank God that they're Americans still saying that. Yeah. But really, does the veteran reflect on, you know, do I even 
have I earned that thank you? And that was the yeah. big thing I would always question. Did I earn that thank you from the American public for my service? Hmm. That's powerful. And I never thought about the, I didn't know that statistic, the 65%. And it yeah. really makes you think. And um, it, it, it's staggering the number of people coming out. And, and part of our focus, as you know, is dealing with those transitioning veterans. You know, we get the opportunity to work with those men and women. That is not a small task. That is not a simple thing. You don't just, okay, I'm done with the military. I'm going to go get a job. Uh, mentally, people can't shift that quickly. Yeah. You know, I, I, like I said, I really love what USA Care, USAA Cares is doing because, mm -hmm. you know, I checked everything out and, and, and how you're trying to figure out how to advocate correctly. But you also use a very important word in, 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 in your writings, empower. Mm. And, and this is where we really have to look at it to what, what's going on with veterans is we cannot paint them all by the same paint by numbers palette. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's so disingenuous, you know. You know, first off, you know, we have to really help the public understand who is the veteran of today. Yeah. And, and a lot of times I think we're missing the mark on who exactly is that veteran and, and you know, what are they going to bring to the table and, and what should they bring back to society? And a lot of it is stop this, you know, people stop giving, giving, giving to veterans. And that's where I want to see veterans thinking more mm -hmm. instead of being enabled. I want to see them empowered. And how do we get them to that thinking process of being empowered once their service is over? Well, isn't that just such the nature of a soldier, too, that they're not used to being handed things? They want to they want to earn it. Those ranks that they have, they earned it. Those 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 badges that they wear on their uniform, they earned it. Nobody handed those yeah. to them. So why why would they want that now? Yeah, you know, that's what that's what I think we're, we were looking at the, the, the if you really look at the crux of this situation is, is what is it, you know, because a lot of times, you know, people are looking to hand them everything. And after a while, you start get a little spoiled sure. and, and it starts to go away. And then it went from being empowered to now being enabled. And once enabled, you're kind of stuck in that cycle. So I, a lot of times I think where we really have to help is really painting to the veterans the harsh reality of transitioning. Mm. And, and, and that's where I think we, we could do a lot better on in so many different facets is what is this transition going to be like? And literally someone that gets after four years, someone that gets out of 20 years, someone that gets out of 35 years, someone that gets out of 37 like John, those transitions are all uniquely different and yeah. they keep trying to make them the same and, and that's why we have to be careful about that young man or woman that gets out after four years well first off let's look at the benefit is they if they can they have the gi bill which yeah. is incredible i mean you're getting literally a free college scholarship after service for four years i mean you tell any high schooler right now you go up to any guidance counselor you know, you're going to get any of their high school students a free college scholarship. Yeah. They go into the military. Well, yeah. guess what's after there? They're, they're going to be able to go to school. OK, but once you get to school, are you going to go to school? Right. My fear is that we may have people that control our budgets. That if we stop, if we stop using these types of things correctly, we're going to lose it. Because literally, if you look back at history, the GI Bill has been one of the most transformative inflection points we've had in the history of the United States, particularly if you look after World War II mm -hmm. and, and what caused the baby boom and, and what happened there. Well, we had, you know, the United States was flooded with veterans more than ever in our lifetime. You're talking millions of, of men and women who came back and took advantage of the GI Bill. What are the yeah. GI Bill costs? State college systems to jump up all of a sudden, affordable college systems to jump up all over. I mean, before, you know, the 1940s, college was really for people that had money. And, yeah. and, and that's why we saw that type of societal dichotomy in a caste system in America. Well, after World War II, that ended because we had the GI Bill and so many took advantage of it. We created a middle class in America. And now we, we, we had the GI Bill come back stronger than ever before. But my fear is that if, if we have them only doing one year and getting out and saying, hey, school's not for me, someday someone's going to say, hey, this is not worth that we're spending all this money. 
where yeah. are we seeing the output? So again, it goes back to a bigger point is how do we properly transition a veteran after their service? We spend so much time. I again appreciate you saying that because we spend so much time just trying to make people aware of the resources available. And so yeah. often they don't use them or they'll use just yeah. a fraction of what's there and they struggle, but they don't have to. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. there. The GI Bill is one of the best, uh, to your point, is one of the best advantages that I think exists. And when I was a kid, the, you know, I'd see the military commercials on TV. That's what sure. they advertised. That's what they promoted. I don't see it promoted much anymore because I would assume that it's not, they're not as interested as they once were. I think I see you know, more. Not, I'm sorry, I, was I don't gonna, know. No, I could go, be Alexis. wrong, but go, I mean, Alexis, I, go, go, I assume. Go, go, Alexis, this is interesting. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, I only, I see the commercials, you know, and trying to get people to enlist and right, enroll, right. but you don't see anything about, I mean, every now and then they'll, they'll say, you know, get your school paid for. Yeah. After but you enroll. It's not the enlist. focus of the commercial. Exactly. And, you know, I always wonder, do they teach you? How, sometimes you have to learn how to go to school. And yes. if you go from this very regimen lifestyle and then you're just released out into the wild and you're like, uh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yes, I have to yeah. go to class. But if there's nobody there saying go to class, you're supposed to be in right. class right now. Uh, do you have that dis self-discipline to really go do that? I mean, as a yeah. freshman in college, I was like, hey. <laughs> I have all this freedom. Maybe I'll go to class. And then yep. uh, right. it's kind of div to my parents are like, get your butt to class mm -hmm. and yeah. get it together. But, you know, a lot of times people don't have that. So it's yeah. teaching people how to do these, like how to do these things after, yeah. you know, after you're out. Yeah, no, you guys raise really incredible points and, 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 and really like, like to give people so there's understanding and wisdom occurring. One, it's interesting, a lot of people now come into the military for the advantages of a, a skill gain, gaining or the benefit of a college education. And, yeah. and we really look at a change, even believe it or not, and my, my, you know, the Marine Corps, where a lot of people would just join the Marine Corps because they just want to be a Marine. We've even seen some shifts there that people want to come into the Marine Corps for other things that could be offered to them in their lives, particularly skill sets gained, you name it. And, and yes, the recruiters, you know, they don't have to really dangle that that carrot stick of a college education out there because it's also assumed now this is what the military is going to do. We had to do a shift because people forgot that's what the military could offer. But if you look at a lot of the recruiting services now and you kind of read into it, they mention the benefits of a military career. But, yeah. but Alexis, you really bring up the right point, though, is that, you know, how do you prepare someone to go to school if you're an OK, you know, high school student, you know, and, and, and you graduated high school and, and, and you graduated. Um, but if you don't know how to spell snow and, and you think you're going to go to college and you're still spelling snow wrong, I mean, yeah. where do we have to have that time for that preparation of the military? Now, there is programs in the military, too, though. We have tuition assistance programs that allow them. It's called off-duty education. So for those that are willing to kind of slow it down a little bit and, enjoy, and, and, and not enjoy life as much, you know, there's, there's advantages in them to go to school while they're in uniform. What it's also allowing them to do is really reduce the time they're going to need the GI Bill, or they can get their bachelor's degree while in uniform mm -hmm. and use their GI Bill to get a master's degree. So there's some good wow. effects. Other points, though, is that we have found that the military member that does go on to school that is committed to it is going to graduate because they've had their fun already. So it's not like waking up freshman year. What do I have to put on? Am I going to yeah. go to class? If I have to go or not? We see that there's a different attitude. God bless you. We see a different attitude with the servicemen and women that they are a little bit more disciplined. Um, they're willing to engage more with the professors. They're willing to get and sit there and take a stand. They're willing to talk in a little bit more in class. Uh, they usually tend to sit up front, you know, and, and they're yeah. prepared for the class. You know, they, they show up on time. So there are some good results when you do see the effects of a military lifestyle on, on someone in, you know, going to university. Absolutely. Wow. So what do you spend your time, at, like how do you help veterans now? What do you do? I imagine once you, you spent 35 years in the military, you don't just kind of throw your hands in the air and say, okay, I'm done. Uh, yeah. I, I imagine you hang on to part of it. So what do you spend your days doing? 
Um, okay, so let's let's get it out. So you see the water over there? Yes, I'm going yeah, surfing. I know it. Stand up it. paddling. I'm going to play golf all right now. Yeah, I, I imagine you you need to keep yourself busier than that, right? Yes. Yeah. No. Because I have to. So a lot of times the mornings have to start early because, hey, we're the ones that chose to live in this beautiful island of Oahu. Yeah. But my day has to start around four thirty because it's six hour time difference to the East Coast. Mm-hmm. which is kind of cool because my day is over a little bit earlier and I do get to enjoy that, that <laughs> beautiful view right there. Yep. But no, what it was, guys, is that I, I the one of the things, and John and I had the discussion because we took our uniforms off at about the same time last year, was you have to remain passionate about what you care about. And that now is that how do I transform that into what I'm doing now? So it's everything for veterans advocacy and their families. Mm -hmm. Um, So you want to align yourself with organizations that have the same values that get you fired up. So I was really blessed and fortunate. I was hired on right right the day I was retiring from you might have heard of this guy named Chef Robert Irvine. So I was hired (laughs) on. Absolutely. Robert. And and Robert's such a a dear friend. and, And he just called up and he's like, dude, you're coming to work for me. That's awesome. And he, and he put me in with his the Robert Irvine Foundation. Yeah. So now I get to swear for the Robert Irvine Foundation. And, and, and you see the goodness that Robert is so devoted and committed to taking care of active duty veterans, first responders, families, you name it. So it still gives me that chance now to stay connected with something that someone else who's just as passionate and you could exude that passion to taking care of, you know, how do we take care of veterans? Um, and that's such and, and a great course, organization. And anybody, I just want to plug anybody who's listening, you know, check it out. And I believe it's, is it, is it, uh, I'm trying to think of the website. Is it Robert Irvine foundation.org? That's it. Robert found okay. Robert Irvine foundation. Yeah. org. Thanks. Yeah, it yeah. is. We have a big event coming up in Philly on, on the 1st Good. of November. Um, and, 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 you know, it just Robert, you know, what you got to love about Robert is what you see is what you get and, and, yeah. and his commitment to you know, the families of, of, of our, our veterans and in and, and, and active duty. He just, he just, I think that's where he enjoys the most. And, and if he is not making restaurant, you know, impossible or dinner impossible, he would be spending time on one of the bases working out all day with these guys. That's awesome. Um, well, how great that you guys got together. I think you, you yeah. each, uh, can, can kind of give and take with each other. I'm sure. So, uh, no, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I know no, you, you, what are some of the other organizations you work with as well? Cause I know you're not just a one, uh, a one man show. No. Or so. No, you know, it's, it's really cool. So like I said, I was work for, I get to consult with Beaver Fit. So I've probably okay. a bunch of the people I want to do, you know, you understand human performance is, is the incredible folks at Beaver Fit. But I think where my real passion though, is what I really enjoy the most is, is that, um, you know, one thing when you do retire, you get asked to sit on a lot of boards yeah. and a lot of think tanks. So I, I did take a teaching position with Marine Corps University so I could still teach. Oh, wow. Um, and yeah, and, and, and just so I want to have connection um, to the young men and women in uniform. And it's not to go back, be the old guy to relive old glory days. It's yeah. not that at all. It, it, it's just that I call them my heroine because I'm stealing their psychic <laughs> life force. And I love to be with the young ones because yeah. what you see with these young warfighters is that they are so forward thinking. They're so different mm. from the, the characters that John and I were when we were first in uniform, that the young men and women today in uniform are absolutely just they'll, they'll gobsmack you with what they are thinking, how yeah. they're thinking. And I want to be a part of that development. Um, I also do um, leadership consulting for the Resilience Building Leader Program. Mm. Um, I, I sit on two think tanks. Um, wow. So one's the Asia Pacific Security Innovation Forum out of, uh, out of New Zealand, and the other one's the Afghanistan Security Institute out of Ottawa, Canada. So that causes where you have to do some thinking during the day. And, yeah. and, then, and then, guys, I'm really blessed to be on a bunch of really cool boards from our community salutes to, to, to the Youth Impact Program to the one I'm really excited about right now is one called Four Block. Um, okay. And I don't know if you all heard about Four Block. In, Tell in, us about it. Yeah, let's let's hear about it. Uh, man, so for the veterans out there, there's so many different things that are going to help you with transition. But, you know, we like using that word transformative. What's going to be the one that's going to be transformative instead of transactional in your mm. transition? And, and Four Block is one of those organizations right now with what they're doing is they're really putting – 
you know, what they'll do is assessment test these veterans. They link them to coaches that are going to understand that personality assessment. And along the way, in a three-month cohort, they're going to sit there and, and set them up not to get jobs, but positions. Mm. And, and so this is the other thing, you know, you find this interesting is how many of the veterans, and this is scary when you see, you know, associated statistics, is how many veterans leave that first job after one year, and it's about yeah. 65%. It's very high, so, yeah. And, then, and the exit surveys on those are dictated by the lack of camaraderie. Yeah. So what we're trying to do with four block is you try to link up veterans that, again, are going to have the same values that we're driving them. And, and I got them. Hey, they want to go make money. They want to go do these things. Of course you do. That, that, that drives a lot of people. But if you could have that deep talk with someone and said, really, is it the paycheck at the end of the day that's going to drive you to keep coming back every day? Is there going to be those other things other than pay that makes you have a loyalty to an organization? So at Four Block, we're really trying to tear that apart and, and help them along the way to understand how to go into not jobs, but positions. That's yeah. that's so important. We were just talking about that earlier today, and we, we were talking um, about all the, the veterans who come out and grab the highest paying job that they can find. And to your point, they, they don't make it long. They just won't stay long. And, and it's largely because they, don't, they lose that sense of purpose. You know, yeah. they, may be, they may be earning a good paycheck, but they're miserable. Right. You know, and that's, that's the thing I think we're missing a lot with a lot of our, 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 our veterans that transition right now. You guys see that with what you're dealing with it. Yeah. And, and, and again, too, then you get a workforce that becomes what? Disjointed. You get, get a workforce that now disenfranchised. And, and what we really have to think about, Matt and Alexis, is a strategic long view. Now, the strategic long view, if you have this disenfranchised veteran core that's out there, well, what's going to hurt is that if some younger man or woman are thinking of going back into the, or going into the military service, this disenfranchised veteran is going to say it's not worth it. Yeah. And, and, and we're already in trouble when we only have 17 percent of the entire society is recruitable right now to military service. Wow. So if we're having, you know, veterans that are disenfranchised over their service, they're not going to help the next level that and next generation of veterans come into service. Well, so that's yeah. really going to hurt us as a nation. You know, it's it's unbelievable right now, and I think you're hitting on something that that is is to be quite honest a frustration to me, and that's that there's so many good things about the military, but all we hear is the negative. We get beat over the head with the negative. I don't know how the military recruits because all these people are only hearing about how Afghanistan is falling apart and nobody seems to know what they're doing. And they ask and, you if they like camping and that's yeah, how they get you. Exactly. Yeah. From a previous episode. Yeah. But I mean, when all you're getting is a tiny little glimpse of what it's actually like, you're not, I, I don't know how you're going to recruit people. And so how do you keep people positive, especially right now? Because yeah. we keep telling all these, all these amazing people who came back from serving in Afghanistan that your time was worth it. It was not wasted. It was worth it. And it made people's lives better. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I am not going to let my service be taken into vain. No. I, mean, I, I, I kept raising my hand for, for 35 years because I believe this. Yes. And I still believe it. And, and, and no one's going to take that away from me ever. I mean, you know, did I feel down for a couple of days? Yeah, I, I felt down because of the people that we lost. I'm yeah. always going to feel down. I mean, you right. know, I mean, I, I visit Punchbowl National Cemetery here to be among the people just to just to tell them that, hey, you're worth it. You meant it. You're valued. You need yeah. it. But so how do we change and and first off is is we have to get more people that are going to sit there and be willing to talk truth to power yeah and, and that's what we don't see a lot of people they want to hide away from their military service yeah whoa you know that, that, that then why do you even serve then you know I, right. I i really have a problem with you know i got it you know when people first get out and they have the reverb effect you know and it's mm -hmm. let's see how long i can grow my fair let's see how much i could put on my face let's see how much i could change my body okay i don't care you still served all right. I, I still love you. Yeah. Um, 
you know, you see that little effect afterwards, but that's anything, a little rebellion phase. Got it. Sure. You know, you're just been told what to do for so many years. I mean, yeah, I did it too. When I retired, you know, I grew, I got, I got to grow my hair long. <laughs> I got to grow a beard. I blamed it on COVID, you know, like the razors <laughs> didn't work anymore, you know, but yeah, you each go through that phase, but it's how fast you recover out of that phase and, and let them know that it's worth it. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of times is, you know, I usually tell a lot of them is don't pay attention to the noise that's out there. You know, try yeah. to find other veterans, too. And that's the problem is um, I, I do some really cool things with two organizations. One's this organization called Fifth Principle. And, and, and I'm teamed up. John's involved with Fifth Principle. It's another guy mm-hmm. named Chris Greca. Um, who started it. And, and it's how we're trying to get and, and going about, we try to evangelize to those transitioning about what does it mean to have served? Yeah. And a lot of times what we're trying to tell them when we're with them is it's a simple maxim. Can I count on you? Can you count on me? Can you look to the person on your left and your right? Or even right now, Matt, look to Alexa, Alexis, look to Matt. And all you say to each other, can I count on you? Can you count on me? And what you start to do is you're achieving perfect accountability to live accountable. So regardless of all the noises, that's what I've been telling a lot of the veterans right now is turn on the squelch, meaning all that noise that you're hearing that's going on. I'm not saying be dismissive of it. I'm not saying don't understand it. What I'm saying is a lot of times is you know how to turn on the squelch because you know what is real and right. And don't let someone else tell you what is real and right. You know, it's the right why, not someone else's why. And that's what we're trying to evangelize to the veterans that, hey, when you're out there, you know, you're going to be the best poster if we're going to have a military for the future. And now as a citizen, and like I said, you know, we have new ranks, you know what I mean? I'm a private citizen now. Yeah. Um, I'm worried, though, the future of this society and who's going to defend America and, and if we have people going back and saying, hey, service is not worth it, it's not valued, no one's going to raise their right hand. And, and are we going to go yeah. to a draft, which I, which some people would advocate for? That mm-hmm. means everyone gets a chance to serve. But that means no one's doing it out of their heart. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to have that Sorry, desire, you're getting that passion. Here. Getting no, excited here. you're right. You know, I think for those who are worried, though, who are worried about the state of the military, worried where we're going, how we're going to defend our country. I think you brought up something earlier that I don't want to miss, and that was the work you're doing with Four Block. I, I think the younger generation is pretty special in that they've seen through a lot of the stuff uh, that maybe my generation or other generations didn't, in that they tend to work for purpose, and they tend to pick uh, their pa- follow their passion more than the, the money. And so those who are passionate about serving their country, they get it that their grandfather and father served for a reason. That generation is going to be strong. And those people who discount them, I think they're really missing the boat. Yeah, I, but, you know, but, but the problem, Matt, I think you have to look at, though, is what's still the, the this season of disenfranchisement that's going around. Yeah. And, and, and people are so many people are affected by it. And, and that's where I just don't see enough of the veterans taking advantage of the programs that are available to them or what could help them, who's enrolling in VAs, you know, you know, that's things that we really have to sit there when we're talking about veteran veterans advocacy groups is Mm -hmm. my biggest fear is that if we don't use programs, we're going to lose programs. Yeah. And how do we gain that awareness where something else could overstep it? You know, how do we get USA cares Mm -hmm. out there as it's leading choice to take care of veterans, advocate for veterans when, something else in the news cycle might crush it at that moment. Yeah. Um, so, and know, that's, who do we become the people that evangelize for you? That's it's, it, there's so many great nonprofits. One of the things that, that I want USA cares to be is an advocate for all the other nonprofit military nonprofits that are out there, because we are not the yeah. answer for everybody. We do a small right. part and we do what we can, but we can't take care of the needs of everybody. And so, you know, mentioning these other nonprofits that you did, they are wonderful and they are doing great work. And we need to we need to all rise up and help each other and support each yeah. other and promote each other. And getting the word out there about what's available to these veterans, you know, for us, it means opening chapters around the country 
and hopefully yeah. soon in Hawaii, by the way. I'm just going <laughs> to throw that out there. But opening chapters around the country to build these communities, these networks of veterans to support each other, but also to share, hey, you know what? I went to the VA and they helped me with that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the one. If, if I can't extol that, I mean, I, I get to do something else, you know, and it's not shameless plug time, but these are again, <laughs> you're, okay. only align your, you're only going to align fine. yourself. And one that I jumped on was the, the Emory Healthcare Veterans Program. Okay. Now, here's an example of a phenomenal program based out of the one of the five brain centers that have been formed due to the events that have occurred post 9-11. Mm -hmm. and, and where traumatic brain injury has really become something that, you know, originally we thought it was football players in, in college and high school in the NFL. And we found out, no, it's really the military that's suffering from this. And, and mm -hmm. how do we get ahead of it? Because the, the results of TBI, you know, I, I'm a survivor of TBI. There's other survivors of TBI. Um, but how do you get involved that? How do we get this word out that that it's OK not to be OK? How do you get the yeah. help? And, and there's so many things, others. And that's why when you have USA Cares could be on the vanguard of promoting these others, we're going to get the help that the veterans are going to need. At yeah. the same time, these programs will be sustained because they are doing goodness. But we don't want to have it where we have a forgotten generation of soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, soon to be Space Force. I mean, right. You know, that's why when, it, when you see what like these organizations, what they're doing, like Emory, what they're doing for a two week program to take veterans and reintegrate them and, and fix what they have going and with continued care. And here's a cool thing. COVID showed us that Zoom world now could be the new things, how we Absolutely. get business. I mean, John and I, you know, we heard something was really cool. John and I sat on a um, leadership panel for Deloitte in May for Memorial Day. And one of the folks on the uh, leadership panel was a 27 year um, case officer for the CIA. And he mm. said the coolest thing. He goes, I've only worked remotely for the last 27 years. And it was one <laughs> of those moments you heard that and you're like, no kidding. Wow. You know? and, and he had no problem working remotely. And, and so, you know, how do we sit there and, and make what has now become a new norm where it's acceptable? We could do so many other things with this. Yeah, it's going to what's what's the next, you know, when we're doing this, you know, it's going to be virtual screens or I just pull something out of the sky. Holograms. You know, wow. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 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 But, but but how soon? Because look at Space Force. Do you believe that that the young men or women that are going in the Space Force now in the next five years or less are going to be on the moon? I mean, Crazy. my dad used to threaten me. I was going to the moon a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but I am so envious of uh -huh. anyone that's in the service right now or coming in the service. Yeah. They literally are going to be going to the moon. Wow. I mean, think That's about amazing. that. Yeah. yeah. That was my mind. Wow. Let me look how fast we just, this last couple of weeks, we've had civilians go to the moon that were really, you know, they didn't go through the whole NASA program. Yeah. They made it back, right? I think they And did. made it back. I think, I think so. they did. Oh, no, they made it back. They did. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like I said, Matt, Alexis, you got to do your next podcast from the moon. Come on, let's do this. Hey. That's a little too far for We're going to start with Hawaii. <laughs> but yeah, maybe. So cool. what, are the, what are the things? So I, I would ask you speak directly to two different groups for a second. So sure. speak to the people um, coming out of the, the service and speak to those young men, men and women looking at going in. What yeah. encouragement would you give to each one? Yeah, for those, you know, this is great. Thanks, Matt, for, for this little bully pulpit here. You know, for those yeah. that are getting out of the service, regardless, you got to remember one thing. It was a privilege to serve. So, so, so don't sit there and think that you're owed anything because you're not. You, you were paid every two weeks for four years. Let, let's put the reality of it. So it was a privilege that the American taxpayer allowed you to serve our nation. Let, let's look at it for what the reality is. They allowed you to serve. And so now because of this service, you are given opportunities to represent our country in so many different ways. It's either going to school and making a difference or learning a trade or contributing to society. It's, it's, it's building families that are going to be sustainable to this country that's going to show American might. So the veteran out there, hey, you got a flag on your shoulder, be on your shoulder, on your sleeve of your arm, you be prepared to represent what everything that means of this nation. No one's giving you nothing on this one. 
So that's why I want you to stop thinking, veterans, that you're owed anything. No. If we didn't pay you for four years, okay, we owe you. <laughs> but, but you got paid. Now, yeah. for those that served in combat, that served alongside certain things, okay, I, I understand the depth of your commitment, but why did you do it? And let's do it for the real reasons why you did it. You did it for that man or woman on your left and your right. You served for each other. And you served at a time where you're doing it to take care of other people. You were being totally selfless. So that's all I'm asking you to be in your next transition in, in, as a veteran is to continue to be selfless. You already chosen the path of being selfless. Just do me a favor. Continue on that path of being selfless. And they will be the game changers for our society. And for those that are getting ready to come in, Literally, you're going to the moon. Why not? <laughs> but, Sky's the limit. But, that not I, not even this, that anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's beyond yeah. it. But but you know it's out of this world. Yeah. Um, truly. But, but really, no. For those that are you know, why should you go into the military? Well, that's a great question to ask yourself. Why should I enter the military? I'll make it real easy. Do you want to serve alongside the finest? men and women you'll find in a society. The greatest power of our American military, and a good friend of mine, Lieutenant General Brian Fenton, taught me this, was you could find someone from anywhere in the military. And if <laughs> anything that we have in society, there is someone from everywhere. And we're not, we're a diversity, a thought organization. Mm. And that's why if you want to be exposed to the greatest sense of diversity out there, then you come into the military because, you know, you're going to wake up with people from literally all over the world. I, I tell a great story. When I was at Indo-PACOM, we had some visitors from Nepal and we did not confirm what dialect uh, that they're speaking from Nepal because Nepal had about three different dialects that could be spoken. We literally called over to the army headquarters and we found a staff sergeant that was born and raised in Nepal that spoke all three dialects. He wasn't a interpreter. He was in supply. We dragged him right over. We saved the day. So now the Nepalese had a problem. Someone from everywhere is in yeah. our military. And, and we have to seize upon that diversity. We have to use that diversity. And if anything's going to change you as a human being is the diversity that the military is going to offer. So that's why I, 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 when that's you look awesome. at what you could sit there and you confront in the military is just take advantage of just learning about different people. I mean, that was the coolest thing. I mean, all the countries that I've been able to visit or live in or be exposed to or the friends that I've made in other nations. These are things that really keep me going in life. Yeah. And, I, and we hear that so often, mm -hmm. don't we? Yes. That the you know the the friends that people made when they were in the military are their lifelong friends. Those are the ones that they turned when they're having the bad day, they call one of them. You know yep. they they talk to them, and that's that's your go to. John Troxel was my life set. Yeah, like I said, that's what John sat me down one day, and I had to get that finger in the face. But that was a game changer. <laughs> that I but yeah. these are these people that aren't afraid to do that. Sometimes you know your family, DNA family, they may have some problems because they don't know exactly what you're going through. Right. But your brothers and sisters that you served alongside that understand it, you know, you don't need DNA to make someone your brother or sister. Absolutely. That's awesome. Well, I want yeah. to I want to thank you for this. Um, thank you. I, I, I'd love to have you on again sometime. I feel like we could talk all day. <laughs> yeah. So this is, yeah, this is awesome. This is I don't know. But, I didn't let Alexis. Does Alexis have anything to say? Can we get one go more ahead. thing from Alexis? Go ahead, Alexis. I, know, I, I always sit here and like I take all the information in. And I get so into the conversation just listening to it. I'm, I'm all in. Um, I do have a question. So your, yeah. your nickname uh, in the email that I saw. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about Spuds. that. That's a good idea. Spuds. How, how did that come along? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, yeah, because that's why I kind of got weird when you, when you said Anthony Spadaro. I was literally going, who? What? Um, <laughs> Does everybody yeah. call you Spuds? Yes, even my wife. <laughs> no. I oh, swear that's to funny. God. Not to me, not to me. Uh -huh. but, but when she's talking to other people, because a lot of people have no idea. You say, hey, Anthony Spadaro, and they go, huh? Who? They go, Spuds. I'm like, oh, Spuds? Um, <laughs> So I got, you know, it was one of those things, believe it or not, I got stuck with that way back at prep school. I'm talking, 
oh my god 40 plus years ago and it was just transformed over into the military when just people because i would just call myself hey spuds and 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 i just got so used to it now of course my mother hated it (laughs) that was a there was a big you know if people would call up and ask for spuds she used to hang up on the phone you hang up and you know so they called back (laughs) after anthony um but yeah i got that stuck just it's a variation of my last name spadaro even though there's no you there you know i was before spuds mckenzie that little dog that bud used. i was there before spuds Mm -hmm. you know mcgraw that was the (laughs) basketball player Hey, come on. Yeah. I had this back in the early 70s. Um, <laughs> we were trying to figure so, which of those two characters you were named after because I, I was thinking yeah. Spuds McKenzie. So I yeah. should have trademarked. I should have trademarked. <laughs> you could have been rich. Uh, yep. yeah. yeah. So, no. So, that's how Alexis, I, I got the nickname. And, and again, if you're utilizing people who are going to utilize that one, I, I've, I've come to just, it's my name, you know? So, yeah. Well, when you that's it. Spuds, so yeah, there's nothing really cool. I wish I could say there was like some cool backstory to it or something. You need to make one up, right? Just make one up. Nah, nah. Well, if you already well, yeah, come with a nickname, yeah. if you come with a nickname, it's kind of hard to be given a new one, you know? I think. That's yeah. true. It does protect you a little yeah. bit. So it could you guys be have a nicknames? good or bad thing. No nicknames for you guys? Alexis, nickname? No? Um, no. Not really? <laughs> my no. parents, like my family calls me Lexi and certain yeah. friends call me Lex, but. That's it. That's all. Nothing Matt? exciting. No, I'm pretty boring, I guess. I don't have uh, one. We got to we we come up with that. For you, <laughs> no. We at the office have a nickname for you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Gene. Yeah, all right, well, we'll save that one. <laughs> but no, hey, I, I, I can't thank you guys. Literally, though, first off, you know, we found this is the best medium right now, how people are doing it. And, and right. so I, I can't thank you all and to the production staff and, and to Traces, everything that you guys are doing there. Um, cause anyone that continues to advocate, because, you know, that's what I'm afraid of is if we don't get the exposure, we're going to lose it. So, so, you know, I, I can tell everyone, you know, remain resolute and remain relentless. So whatever you're doing, you know, you know, John has, you know, Etool Nation, you know, and, and, right. you know, John has some great ones from PME hard to yep. you, you name it. Right. Yep. Um, but mine used to be when I was in uniform was being lethal and intimidating. But what I've kind of switched now is that, you know, continue to do great deeds and endure, but we remain resolute and relentless in all you endeavor. And that's mm-hmm. what I'm just telling you. The USA cares is just remain resolute, remain relentless, because you're going to make a difference when you're taking care of our veterans, their families. But let me add this next one to you and that and next generation of veterans. Yeah, it's so true. It's it's going to it's going to affect people for generations it really will and what we do now is going to have a long, lasting impact well thank so you God so much you this, oh, is, man, this cool. is really an honor to have you on and thank you for uh you know we talked about saying thank you for your service and i know you said it was a, a privilege but i'm going to thank you anyway because we uh we appreciate Thanks. you and we need more people like you and um so i i i'm glad you're you're encouraging uh so many young people to uh, and opening yeah. them up to to what's possible, so. Well, you know what, too. If there, there, like I said, there's other groups out there too that are helping out the youth of America right now. And like, check yep. out a good one that I just joined on with called the Young Marines. And Absolutely. you know, they, check out the Young Marines. And literally, they're they're the campaign right now that I literally believe that's going to be that generational transfer. Um, specifically, you know what they're trying to teach young men and women, and it's not a recruitment. It's, it's not something to go into the Marine Corps, the military. It's just yeah. to really change 10 to 17 year olds. So Where can please, they learn more about young Marines? You go to youngmarines.org. There you go. And, and they're going to find it. And, and literally, I joined up with them. And it wasn't because of the whole Marine thing. It was mm-hmm. because what they're doing for literally transforming the youth of America. So I, I, that's why I said, well, let's talk about the youth of America next time we get together. Absolutely. I think that's great. We'd love that. All right, well, guys. Sergeant Major Spuds Spadero. <laughs> it was a Hello. privilege. Thank you all. Thank you so much. And we're going to talk to you again, okay? I look forward to it, guys. God bless you both. Take care and you see too. in Hawaii. Sounds yes, good. Thank you. All right. Well, Alexis, we've got, uh, we've got a lot of things going on. We've got mm-hmm. so many uh, events coming up. Uh, I'd encourage anybody to check out all of those wonderful yes. events. Where can they find out more? They can find out more on our website. It's usacarers.org. Yep, absolutely. And there's a couple different tabs in there you can check out. The events tab, the chapters tab. Find out what's going on all around the country. There's lots of ways for you to get involved today. Don't sit on the sidelines anymore. 
decide that today's the day that you get involved and that you want to help. So check that out at usacares.org. I want to give a quick thank you to the Speakeasy Podcast Network right, with Wayne Media. Uh, really, they're doing a, a tremendous job supporting our podcast, but a lot of they're the voice for a lot of other uh, companies and organizations as well. So learn more about them at speakeasynetwork.com and, uh, and see if you can get involved with them today. So uh, we've got a, a event coming up here in Louisville sure on do. November 7th. Why don't you talk about that for a second? Um, well, you better gear up your rucksacks and uh, fill them up with lots what, of What, 100 pounds? Things. 50 yeah, pounds? 100 you know. pounds? Yeah. <laughs> our, our buddy Robert, he used to carry one of those. I, I think you could do 50 pounds, couldn't you, Robert? cause any uh, you know, flashbacks to... We we shall see about that. You can do. 50 I, I'm pounds. going to do my best. Um, Come I, on, I'm Marine. To, Let's go. I'm going to make it all the way through. I can guarantee that. <laughs> well, it's I, nice. I don't know what's going to happen. You as may soon see as I him the line. dropping weight out of his rucksack as he goes. We'll, but we'll, we'll see. have to go back and you know collect all the items people toss. Out of their <laughs> I'll <laughs> crawl to the finish line if I have Absolutely. to. Absolutely. It. It's a. It'll be a nice, easy three k. It's a three k. You know, yeah. two, two little over two miles. You um, can do it. Ruck walk. And, and it'll be right along the riverfront. And for those of you who know Louisville, Kentucky, it's right along the riverfront. It's a beautiful area, uh, beautiful scenery. Mm -hmm. And you'll be along with uh, a lot of other veterans and a lot of other people who just love veterans. Indeed. Indeed. So check it out so. at usacares.org. Yep. Uh, if you want to learn more about us on social media, go to... Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter. And now... TikTok. TikTok, which we're not all that crazy about, but we're going to do it anyway. We feel a little, uh, well, I feel a little no, bit. No, and you have old folks like us on TikTok. Outdated <laughs> on TikTok. So we have, a, we have a, a wonderful young lady named Lexi Hedges who's overseeing that for us. Thank you, Lexi, and getting that going. So, uh, but, but get involved today. Check us out, usacares.org. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button on the podcast and make this part of your weekly routine. Uh, find out more about what's going on around the world of veterans. And uh, like I said, get involved today. But we thank you so much for being with us, and we look forward to being with you again next week.